I thought you might be interested in my story cycling from Chiang Mai to Bangkok. A friend of mine who's cycled in many places in the, around the world, and a friend of his, a um, French fellow, I forget his name at the moment, we're going to go cycle to Cambodia. And all of us had to do visa runs. I had a bike and I was riding around Chiang Mai with it. But um, no, long, no distance riding ever. I decided I'd like to go with them and I thought that was a great idea. His friend, not so much. So, no real time to warm up or anything. It's like a week and stuff. And off we went. One fine morning. We pedaled and we just pedaled and we, we rode the whole day to like Lampoon or something, I don't know. Um, I slowed those guys down a bit, but uh, you know, I soldiered on. What happened is, the muscle cramps. It started in my feet and then you know my knee, the knee was really, I mean I, I, I probably both at the same time but the knee feels you know like it's being worked and it wants to click you know and stuff so I felt it in my knees a bit and then I felt it in my shins and just kept, I had to keep riding, I wanted to keep up with these guys and then in my in my knee joint, uh, above the joint you know where the, the connective tissue and uh, well, I started nodding up and my calves nodded up and you know I mean I really had to sort of stand up and stretch out as much as I could and keep pedaling you know so the long and the short of it, it and it got really unbearable actually and, and it, it, it stayed for a long time but it it's funny it moved itself through and then it eventually faded in the original spots and then you know as it moved further in my calves and my, uh, my thighs and, and uh, you know up into my hips and then but as it moved further, it sort of, you know, it was going in a wave, in, in waves, and, you know, came and went and stuff in lower parts. And it's very interesting, really. And I thought, well, you know, this actually motivated me a bit because it stopped hurting so much in my, around my knees and, and um, moved on. And so I, I but it, it came back, and especially, you know, for Charlie Horses, I, uh, you know, I, if it got really bad, I'd, I'd stop and stretch it out and then, you know, not stretch it out, but stretch and move on. So we went on for this and we got onto this uh, strip, <laughs> the incline. Every load, every road was uphill as far as my brain was concerned, you know, I mean it was just getting, but there was one incline, it was just about like, you know, not, not much, like that, but steady for a kilometer plus. And uh, I got about a third of the way up and those guys are up ahead of me, I think there was a little bit of breeze, and no real wind, but a breeze it felt like a, a wind. I just couldn't go any further without resting, so I stopped and I rested and then, you know, those guys noticed they were way up there. I didn't call out to them or anything, I just was going to catch up to them, I guess. So they came back and the, th the third guy, the French guy, uh, he was a six-pack and everything else. He played badminton, I think, every morning for a couple hours and did all kinds of workout stuff. Uh, he was in great shape, but all he was doing is, as he went along, he was fueling himself with, uh, you know, the uh, unrefined raw sugar. So anyway, uh, he was, you know, taking spoonfuls of that at a time, and he's, he wasn't happy for me to be there, period. And I think he just, you know, he was all business, he wanted to go. But we did have a deadline to get, and we were fine with the deadline. But uh, he was angry all the time. <laughs> but he took out a tablespoon and a, scooped out a big thing of sugar, he said, here, eat this. So I ate it, and phew, not even 10 minutes later, I was full of energy, I wasn't aching, and I was ready to go. So, uh, you know, I felt I got my wind. I really appreciated it. And I, I told him that. Off we went. And that was great. And we, we rode, and, and it was good. And, and we rode the day, finished the day, the evening, and stopped at a spot, and like a bush, something like this, actually, and found our way in and pitched our tents and slept. Ironically, we had to share a, a tent. We had a, a two or three person tent on, we had a one man tent. <laughs> We were both on tents. So it was, you know, it was fine anyways. We we were getting along fine. And actually the the next day and whatnot, he was he was better, except, you know, when we got hungry. Yeah, so we, we were all getting hungry, but I wasn't saying very much because, uh, you know, these guys are the experienced guys and I'm a tag along. So I, 
I didn't want to say too much about anything, but I did finally speak up about being hungry and, and French guy, and if I ever can remember his name, I'll mention it, I'll get it in here. Um, he was really hungry, and we were passing places, and we were saying to Ma, you know, let's uh, let's get something to eat here. What about here? What about here? But Ma, but Ma really needs to be the leader in order to be comfortable. And uh, so, um, going along, now there's no places, right? We're riding back out and away from civilization. And finally, over on the right, there's kind of a, well, you typical dilapidated market, but there was one spot open, and they obviously won't open until the evening, afternoon, evening, but we're starving. So what do we have to do? We have to get from this side of the divided highway with the guardrails across that mess, and it wasn't a nice cleaned out one, believe me. And uh, over the guardrail on the other side, you know, through the, there's some traffic, but anyway, and then get over there. Then we're going to have to come back onto, you know. But well, besides, it's time to stop. So we stopped. He, I think he rode down and carried his bike across somewhere. So we, we're going to cross right there because it's right there instead of going back and whatnot. So lift my bike across. They're heavier. They're loaded up bikes for long tour, right? We're going for a few weeks. So I lift mine over and he gets his over and then we get through and across and we're at the guardrail and we're on the outside of the road side. And he's been bitching and complaining and angry and you know going on to me and stuff and like we're all got the same thing you know just keep it to yourself leave me alone right. But he just wouldn't let up on me about this and that harping on about and whatnot. And then he's we're there and so I lift my bike over he's just oh, I have to lift my bike over and, and I struggled to lift mine over and uh, you know I, mean, I was weak and aching because I'm you know I was the weakling in the group. I just went on and on I have to lift this over and standing right up against the railing I said get on the other side I'm gonna lift it over and you get it on the other side right so when I lift it up and over he steps right into the railing pretty close to the railing and I bring it down well it's, it's the bike was bloody heavy I'm not Superman here I, it's coming down with some weight well, I guess it, it rubbed the chain against his leg and he got grease <laughs> below his knee at the top of his shin and he started <laughs> screaming at me, see what you did, see what you did, you fucking yeah, you know, stuff I didn't understand. <laughs> and I'm like, doing this actually, doing this, I started laughing because I can't believe he's having a tantrum. Like, unbelievable, it's a bit of chain grease, right? And he's, oh, he's going insane, insane, insane. And the blah, 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 and he hates me. And I mean, I said, look, did he, sorry, you know, I was apologizing as well because, you know, in case it cut him and scraped him or nothing, but it didn't. It was grease. It's not a pant leg, it's bare legs, right? You know, as in washable. Oh, he just was insane. And then so we, we went across the road and down into the marketplace. Well, he wouldn't sit. Mom had taken a seat already. He got over there before us, just sitting down and looking at his maps. So he refused to sit with us. He, we went over like about 50 feet, maybe even more away. And he sat down over there. He was complaining and there. He did it just himself complaining. And then he wanted to make a big show of it, you know? I mean, like a 12-year-old brat. I said to him, you know, go wash. And I said, there's freaking washrooms at, at the back. There's a sign, go wash your leg. Stop whining. So he uh, makes a big performance and he comes over and walks past us instead of going right through where he could have walked on. And then he laid a curse on me as he went by. What not, he went back in the back. It didn't get the grease off for whatever reason, I guess, because of, frankly, because he didn't want to. And, uh, um, so he come out pitching and whining. Come off, said something to him. I said, you know, there's a 7-Eleven 100 feet away, you know, so I'm going down to the 7-Eleven to get, I'm going to get into their air conditioning for one thing. And I'm, uh, this was in March sometime. It was in the heat season. Right? I went down to 7-Eleven and I'm in there and actually it was oh, so great. I was taking my time walking around, got myself a cold drink, ice cold water. So I got the stuff. As I'm coming out, the doors open and there's me and a bunch of ties. And he's standing outside and he's ranting and he's got his bike and he says, well, I'm going on without you guys. I'm not staying with you guys anymore. I'm leaving, you know. Bon voyage. And uh, he took off. Anyways, we rode on and it was a very cooperative.